My latest guests today here on Inside the Vault, they are the host of the YouTube channel, two fans in the stands, CJ and Tony. Um, one of them is in North Carolina, the other one uh, overseas. So uh, three different places we are doing this podcast today, but uh, good to have CJ and Tony on. You can follow them on Twitter at two fans ITS. So CJ, Tony, welcome to Inside the Vault. How are you? Well, great. Glad to be here. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks for inviting us, Ryan. Sure, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, let me for those who just may not be familiar with kind of your uh YouTube channel and how you guys got started, just how did your channel get started and kind of the idea um behind it? Well, I'm 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 gonna make this short, so I I ain't gonna go down a rabbit hole or anything like that. <laughs> but um yeah, uh the idea was um actually uh my wife. And um, am, can I? Can you see me on the screen? Yep, mm -hmm. I can see you. Yep. Oh, okay. Because I I see you and CJ going back and forth. I ain't see me, so I ain't know. All right. Yeah, you need me to start over? It no, just, no. We, keep we, going. This is a po live. this is a podcast. Anything can be edited, or it may not be edited. Who knows? It's just, it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, but yeah, okay, but yeah, um. It started uh, a while back. Uh, my, my wife actually gave me the idea. I was uh, ranting and raving one night watching the 76 a game. And, uh, you know, I, I I was just going off about Ben Simmons, how bad he was playing in the game seven, had only scored five points the whole game. And uh, I guess you got tired of looking at me and laughing at me and stuff like that. So it was like, you need to start a podcast. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Because I at, at time I didn't know if I can get somebody to host the podcast with me, you know, I can't sit and, I'm not going to sit and talk sports to myself, you know, cause I sure. ain't know anything about this podcast world. Uh, long story short, you know, I pondered on it for a couple of months. I, I approached my, um, my, uh, one of my close friends, um, Charles with the idea because he loves basketball and I love football. So we was going to talk about the Panthers and the Hornets. Well, you know, due to some, um, health concerns or whatnot we would, that wasn't able to come to fruition so i pondered on it some more and i think for about a year and i post the question to my cousin cj and um you know he he pondered on it for a couple of days because neither one of us wanted to be on camera so that was the biggest obstacle <laughs> that we had so um once we decided to, to give it a chance you know we we dived into it um i think you know, initially we were trying to do like the wavelength type thing where we we shows the wavelength on camera. Yeah. And then, you know, we finally bit the bullet and he was like, you know, I'm comfortable with it. You comfortable with it? I was like, you know, we're gonna do it. Let's just hey, just, let's just do it. So that's what that's what happened, man. And so um, you know, ever since then we we steadily trying, we steadily growing, trying to evolve, improve, um, never being comfortable you know, just where we at. So we're always trying to improve the channel and things like that. But it, it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun ride, man. We we have loved it every single minute. So yeah, yeah. that's that that's how it got that's how it got started in, in a nutshell. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, um, we're here to talk about the Panthers uh, as you know, uh here on this podcast. Let's just jump right in. Um this Panthers off season and your uh summarization um you can whatever you want to talk about good the bad or the in-between uh what's kind of y'all's thoughts on uh just the overall offseason as a whole um in some ways great in other ways perplexing okay and when i say that i mean i like I, okay at first i did not like the hire of dan morgan for gm because i thought hey he was part of the old regime he's part of some of these old decisions wipe the slate entirely clean, get some fresh pieces in here. But Dan has grown on me since. I like Dave Canales. I like his positivity. Um, the perplexing things, you know, some of the some of the free agent signings and some of the signings that we didn't make and then some of the draft and some of the potential positions that we didn't draft, mm -hmm. you know, center per se. So, you know, but like, like I said, it's, it's, it's been good and it's it's been a head scratcher for me at times too. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm the same way. Uh, besides, I, I was a Dan Morgan fan. You know, you know, I like that hire. 
um, I understood that, you know, by him being assistant general manager, a lot of a lot of this final decisions were not up to him. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't I didn't try to I didn't hold I didn't hold him fault for decisions that were being made. Um, you know, I know he was in the room, probably gave his input, but the final decisions came down to Scott Federer and company. Um, I like the fact I like the hire because he's a football guy, you yeah. know, uh, and play football at a very high caliber, you know, talking about the University of Miami then being drafted by the Panthers, yeah. uh, coached by Sam Mills. So he understands what the keep pounding mantra is all about. So ju just with that and just knowing that, you know, having finally having a, a former player in a decision making um space i thought was uh crucial uh for the panthers everybody's coming from fortune 500 companies or a boardroom or executive here and there but have they played the game of football and i think you know having that experience you are able to see the see the game in a different light and through a different lens so yeah that that was the that was the plus side of the off season for me. The minus, you know, the downside, I would say not drafting a uh, a, a center in 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 the draft. So that that was that was definitely um, that that definitely pe uh, pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let me yeah. say it like that. Well, you know, it, no one can. Um say that you could fill all the positions in one off season, which we know uh, there was going to be something that was left off the list. Uh, my personal one was defensive end, especially after the trade with Burns. I, I thought we should have gotten yeah. another defensive end in the draft personally. Um, that was, that was my qualm. Uh, one of my, one of them. So, but you know, it, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're training camp is just around the corner. Um, recording this on um, Friday, July 19th, um, just before training camp uh, hits off. So, uh, let's preview training camp uh, for a while here. Um, what are you guys watching out for? Uh, what do you want to see? Uh, you can name position battles, just something generally speaking. Um, let's just kind of preview training camp and what you're looking for. Um, hey, like we said, the center position. Okay, we got Austin Corbett. Yeah. I think presumably now Brady Christensen is his backup, if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Correct. And yep. we uh, have an undrafted free agent. Andrew Ram out of Oklahoma. I am hoping that Andrew can come in and play good enough to where the Panthers feel like they could put him as backup. I would feel more comfortable with him as backup than Brady Christensen. And I don't want anybody get, to get the feeling that I'm knocking Austin Corbett in any way. It's just the fact that he's had two knee injuries in one calendar year on the oh, same yeah. knee. So it's just the, the hope that he's able to stay healthy the whole season and that's why i felt like we should have um we should have drafted it back up or either signed it back up or something but that and, and for me it's both sides of the offensive line center and the defensive tackle position because i do want to see shy tuttle have a better you know year two with the panthers i don't think his his first year was as anybody or him wanted it to be yeah i second that motion i think cj said it perfectly um because if anybody listened to our podcast, know I'm all about the trenches. I, I, I'm a firm believer that you build from the inside out. And uh, center was one of those positions that I, I felt like Carolina could not afford to miss on in the draft. It was one of the two positions that I felt was in dire need along with cornerback. Um, not so much defensive end once we signed Jadavion Clowney and DJ Warnham. But the center position, because we don't have a center on the team, we you we when you factor in the the starter and the backup have played zero snaps in the regular season game at the center position in the NFL and zero college snaps. Mm -hmm. Austin Corbett and Brady Christensen were both three year starters at left tackle in college. So I know a lot of people talk about the cross training and, you know, uh, the preparation to, to play center, but have you play center? It's right. one thing to practice it, but it's a different thing when you got the live bullets. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm. When the pads get to popping, that's a whole different ball game. Okay. So mm. that that was my concern and long and, and, and mainly like CJ mentioned, mainly because of the knee injuries. I think if it wasn't for the two knee injuries, the torn ACL then come back and then he strained his MCL and then they shut him down for the rest of the season last year. If it wasn't for that, I think I would be a little bit more optimistic than what I am. But given the fact that and this is the last year of his contract so next year 2025 what do the panthers do you have no uh center position you could have drafted a rookie that could have sat behind austin corbett for a year and then that's your future center for the next five to ten years you know what i mean so that that was my whole thinking about behind the center position but that, that was picking back off CJ. So let me go to the cornerbacks. I think the cornerbacks is going to be a position battle uh, to watch in training camp. I think, you know, everybody is hoping and praying that uh, J.C. Horn stays healthy. And if he's healthy and on the field, we know he got one side, you know, uh, of the field. But there's a loaded room for that second cornerback position. I know we signed Dane Jackson to be cornerback, too. But I don't think that's etched in stone. I think there's some other quality guys on that side of the ball that's hungry, that's coming for that spot. And I think it's going to be a best man win uh, type situation. So, I don't, yeah, I think cornerback, that second cornerback position opposite of J.C. Horn is uh, definitely up, up in the air. And who says we don't sign Stephon Gilmore eventually? Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's after training camp or in August. I, I know that's been talked about. Um, I had Joe Person on uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, he was he was mentioning that could be a possibility. Maybe after the training camp, uh, not two a day practices, but you know the, the live, you know, yeah. pad of practices mm-hmm. um, and seeing kind of what they got because you know right now in shorts with OTAs, it's it's that yeah. we've already had that it, you can't really tell much there. So. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. For, for, for me, I think too, um, specifically not to mention the ones you've already mentioned, obviously, um, you know, with defensive end, I, I just think, you know, one is, is starting on the pup list. Uh, we saw earlier today, tonight, I, I believe, uh, Jonathan Brooks, uh, put on the non-injury list, uh, one Barno and a few others, I believe a Coker, I think might've been on there. Um, you know, so you got one, you got Clowney and, DJ Johnson, who uh, was is a 25 year old second year player and uh, not very good as a rookie. Um, well, to be kind, so not a lot at the uh, edge position depth wise. Uh, I, I'm not even talking about Chase on because he's been a bust at this point. Um, if, if anything out of him would be gravy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's one for me. And then the other one, let's be honest, is the receiver room. I and because. You know, Deontay Johnson, we signed him to a one year, kind of like center. We signed him to a one year deal. Uh, it's his last year on his contract. Uh, so he's only around for this year. Will we re sign him if he has a breakout year? Probably, but you never know. That contracts are fickle. So Thielen is going to be 34. Uh, he's in the last, a second to last year of his deal. Who knows if he'll play a third deal he- year here. And then Xavier Liga is here. Sure. He's going to grow with Bryce Young, but he's, you know, he's a rookie. So, do we have a guy that that a veteran guy who's going to be able to stay here long term and actually grow with Bryce Young besides the rookies and the younger guys? And so Deontay Johnson could be that guy. He may not be. We'll, we'll see after this year. Um, there was talk, obviously, Brandon Ayuk asked out of San Francisco. I personally think that is not a good idea for the Panthers simply because it's going to cost way too much, including a first round pick as, as talented as he is. So. You know, that's a, re- a receiver room is I, th- I think it will be imp- improved from last year, but improved uh, enough to result in a lot more wins. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the offensive line has to keep Bryce up upright. Um, and so that that's kind of a few positions that I'm watching. OK. All right. Yeah. Um. Uh, so number five um, I, on my rundown, I, I was sending you. So. I talked on Joe with Joe person about this on, on my last podcast. I'm a big fan of Terrence Marshall jr. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I'm a big fan of the guy. Uh, I'm, I, okay. I'm a Florida, I'm a Florida fan. So LSU people are, I don't normally cheer for LSU guys, but I, I enjoy watching him, <laughs> you know, at LSU. And I, I, you can tell he's got the body type. He's got the catch radius. I mean, he's got a good skill set. 
the guy just has not kind of taken control in the NFL and kind of translated that over to what he did in college. And it's clear Dave Canales is giving him one last shot. Uh, otherwise, they could have gotten rid of him by now. Um, they easily could have and just not thought anything of it, but they haven't. And so I think he's going to have a chance to make this roster. And, you know, it's not going to matter in the preseason. It's going to matter in the regular season. But, you know, it's uh, we got to start with the training camp in preseason. So um, do you guys think Terrence Marshall Jr., is this going to be the year he finally breaks out? Do you think he can actually contribute after, you know, Thielen, Johnson, get and let's say Mingo is four. Uh, can Marshall be that fifth guy? Can he rise and actually come? Um, can he take hold of that second round pick that he was back in whatever it was, 2020, I think, <laughs> you know, in uh, 2021? Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on Terrence Marshall? I, 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 I know a lot of people don't really think much of him, but I mean, he's got the skill set in my opinion. I think with the right coaching, I think he can break out. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am a big Terrence Marshall fan, too. OK, and I do believe that he's had a combination of I think he was injured his first year. Um, Matt Rule. OK, I don't yep. think he's <laughs> ever been in a favorable position as far as the scheme, play calling, you know, the opportunity, any of that. As we saw when Steve Wilkes took over, you know, the opportunities for him were kind of few and far between and, and from my point of view. Um, I don't think he got enough. And last year, he was just just lost in the sauce with everything and everybody that that was just going on with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Um, I do believe that he has a legitimate shot to make this team and contribute. But I do I also believe that if he doesn't, you know, um, kind of make a point in training camp and also in these preseason games, and somebody else does. I would not be surprised if he didn't make the team. Now, I don't want that to happen. I do want him to make the team, but he's got to come to camp. He's got to show up. He's got to show out, and he's got to make this new coaching staff say, hey, we have to keep him because, as Dave Canales said, you know, he doesn't – well, not as he said, but he doesn't have any loyalty to anybody on this roster, anybody. Right. Right. You know, everybody has to come up and do what they have to do, or they may not make it. So I hope he does, and I, I think he can. But we just have to see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 a Terrence Marshall Jr. fan too. I think um he was more of a Joe Brady pick the year he came out because Joe yeah. Brady had him at LSU. Yep. Um so I, I don't know how much in favor uh Matt Rule was with you know ha- had on had on him in the beginning. I know he had some nagging injuries coming out of LSU that really um hampered the beginning of, of his uh career and I think he was str- struggling through the injuries. Um Steve Wilkes, when Steve Wilkes took over coaching, you see you saw what Terrence Marshall can do with the opportunities given to him. And he wasn't even the number two or number three wide receiver. If I'm not mistaken, that year we still had uh Robbie Anderson and we had DJ Moore. So yeah. even being the number three wide receiver, I mean, he had, if I'm not mistaken, over 500 yards and like what, like 30 receptions, something like that, or something close to it. I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but you saw glimpses of the potential is what I'm getting at. And it's like once Steve Wilkes left, there he go. He's back in the doghouse again. Uh, and he was he was relatively healthy those last uh twelve games of the season. He was relatively healthy. Um this year, I, I don't know. This is, you know, he's he's another guy. This is last year of his contract. It's the fourth year of his contract. Um so as far as keeping him around, you you still getting that good value because he is on his rookie deal. Okay, but the wide receiver room is going to be crowded this preseason. Definitely going to be crowded. You still got um two undrafted free agents that CJ and I are both kind of high on, and that's um Jalen Coker and Sam Pinckney. You know, so you know competition like uh Dan Morgan, Dave Canales uh, mentioned in one of the press conferences. They want competition at every position. So what does competition does? It it breeds. It it makes everyone gets better. 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? So like I said the other day in uh one of our lives, you know, the cream will rise to the top. Okay. Deontay Johnson, I think um if Deontay Johnson goes out and ball and have a good year this year, develop that um that you know d- develops and fosters that relationship between him and Bryce Young, and we are in a position where we have won some games. Definitely got better than what we had last year, and they see the potential of having that connection with Bryce Young and Deontay Johnson. I I think there's a very good chance that he, we can resign him because right now there's nobody on the team outside of Deontay Johnson, but Adam Thielen that is a true bona fide route runner. Those guys are proven route runners in the NFL. There's, there's no no question about it. Uh, Leggett, we're definitely going to see what he's going to bring to the table. Um, he, he's still a rookie. He had one great year in South Carolina. So we want to, I want to see him be able to build off of that. So, yeah, I, I'm hoping we do resign Deontay Johnson. Uh, Brendan Ayu, I haven't given I haven't given that any really any thought because. Even though he's made his trade demand, you know, um, San Francisco say he's not up for, you know, they, they're not trading him. So until they change their stance on, stance on that, then maybe, you know, I, I'll look into it. But, you know, you have a lot of people that's come in talking about we need to swing for defenses. We need to do this and do that. Well, you can't swing if ain't nobody pitching. Yeah. <laughs> you that's know true. what I'm saying? So yep. I'm not going to get myself all in the tizzy for a player that's not even available right now. Yeah. Um, really quickly, um, tight end is a position I think that has gone under the radar uh, for a while now. Uh, even uh, the last year of Greg Olson in Carolina, you know, he was obviously not prime Greg, but um, he was better than what we've had the last probably four years. So um, Tommy Trimble, I think, is someone who has done as about a good of a job as you can do. Uh, granted, he's not Greg Olson, but he has done uh, an admirable job. Uh, he's steadily improved every year. Um, my favorite draft pick in this class, or one of them, is definitely Jatavian Sanders from uh, Texas. I, I think he's going to be yeah, – I think he has a chance to be a Greg Olson type for the Panthers down the road, maybe in two to three years. Um but even as a rookie, I think he can come in, contribute very well in the passing game, be that dependable blanket on third down for Bryce Young. Um, so I just want to get your real quick thoughts uh, on the tight end uh, room uh, this year and and uh, who is uh, – do you think Sanders can have that type of role uh, in year one? Yeah, we were always high on Tommy Trimble. Now the knock, or knock on him coming out of college was his pass catching ability. He was always a good blocking tight end. But I do think that he has, uh, like you said, steadily improved on that since he's been drafted. And again, I think it's, uh, you know, kind of a lack of opportunity uh, position uh, or take with him. Not yeah. that he hasn't got playing time, but, you know, the uh, the amount of targets in the passing game. Um, but, you know, I, I do I do favor him, you know, a little more than, than Ian Thomas on the roster. And you got Jatavian Sanders. I think, you know, he can come in and maybe not instantly, but, you know, I think he can contribute this season, especially be a good red zone target uh, for Bryce Young. Um, Knock on him. He's not that good of a blocker. But, you know, if you go back and look at Greg Olson, I mean, you know, he wasn't the the best blocking tight end in the world. You you know what I mean? But he he made it do what it do when, when he had to. So I do think I, I put it like this. I will go on record and say I do think that's the duo that we're going to have, you know, uh, past this year. I think that's probably the future at the tight end spot. Tommy Trimble and Jatavian Sanders. Once again, I echo uh, CJ's sentiments. Uh, I I second that motion. I concur. All that good <laughs> political stuff. Got it. But uh, yeah, man, I I I'm, I'm high on Tommy Trimble. Loved him when he came out of Notre Dame. Um, you know, everybody know he was more of a pass blocking tight end at Notre Dame. He didn't really get the opportunity there because you have Michael Mayers as the um the true pass catching uh tight end that went to the Raiders. So uh, the opportunities behind him was limited. But you know, you have you have steadily seen him improve each year and i love the uh the cart talk that him and uh chuba hubbard did 
uh, with uh, J.J. Jensen, and they said that how they both stay out to practice on the jug machines like 30, 45, 30 to 45 minutes uh, after practice, each practice. And you can see it in their, um, when it comes to their catching ability, Chuba Hubbard hands has definitely gotten better mm -hmm. than uh, his rookie year to now. And um, Tommy Trimble has gotten better. Uh, Tommy Trimble has gotten better as well. So, yeah, definitely how uh, Tommy Trimble, Jatavian Sanders, I love what we saw on tape from him coming out of uh, Texas. Uh, hope he, be, you know, become a better blocker. You know, just like with Greg Olson, Greg Olson wasn't, wasn't the best blocker, but he knew how to use technique to get done what needed to be done. And um, he would he he studied defenses. So, you know, we if he wants to model his game after Greg Olson, you know, as like he said, then these are the type of things that Greg Olson did, and these are the type of things that you should do. So I think he'll I think he'll foster that relationship with Greg Olson by Greg being in Charlotte showing up at the practices and stuff like that. So he has the opportunity to, uh, you know, get information from him, you know, per se. So, yeah, I think that is the future, him and uh, Tommy Trumbull. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're just joining us or listening um, halfway in at this point, uh, Tony and CJ from Two Fans on the Stands are my guests today here on Inside the Vault. Um, guys, as we wind down and um, – I'll get you out of here and a little bit, a couple more topics. Um, I'm going to go big picture here and uh, don't mind my soliloquy as I kind of uh, talk about this. <laughs> um, you know, Canalis and Morgan, it's very obvious that they are tempering expectations. I think this year, uh, unlike Scott Federer, who is now in Washington, as we saw landed on his feet there on joins Marty Herney, Jeremy Chin, Frankie Luvu and company there. It seems like, you know, Canalis says, you know, we, we want to get the football right. And, and Dan Morgan is saying all the right things about, you know, get, bringing in dogs, bringing in more talent um, than we've had kind of in previous years. So big picture wise, you know, what does success look like for the Panthers in 2024 um, this season? Um, combining with that, um, Bryce Young in year two, um, what does success look like for him? Because if you talk to some people, if, you know, I, I, I want to say it's Colin Coward, I think, uh, on his national show. He likes to say Thanksgiving year two is what they like to say with some of these quarterbacks. If you don't see it by that time, then you're you're moving on to the next guy. Uh, so, you know, uh, yeah. what is your thoughts on um, just kind of big picture success for this year for the Panthers? What is that wins and losses? Is that figuring out is Bryce Young's the guy? Uh, and, and combined with that, what does Bryce Young's success look like uh, this year? Um, and then is I, I guess to add on to that, is Canales and Morgan doing the right thing kind of by tampering expectations? Is that kind of what you're getting kind of the vibe from their press conference media availabilities when talking you know, about this upcoming year? Yeah, I believe that a success in year two for the Panthers and Bryce Young, it's a combination of things. Um, you got to see um, you got to see them evolve. OK, you got to see progression from last year. I think that's number one. OK, I think progression from last year will lead to the most important thing wins. OK, yeah. and it, it it takes, you know, I say it takes a village to, you know, to raise a child. Um, I think people got lost in the fact that Bryce Young is the quarterback and he is one of 11 out there on the field. He doesn't block. He doesn't run routes. He doesn't run the ball. You know, I think some, I like to joke and say he, you know, people think he's serving drinks cross street, the dog house, you, you know, he's parking cars on mint street, you know, just, just every, it, 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 you get to feel like he's doing everything, but you know, it's, it's for me, it's, it's, it's progression. Okay. I think that's number one. It's progression, progression, progression. Are they getting better as a team? And, and Bryce Young, is he getting better as a quarterback? You know, I think Canales made it a, uh, a point to work on his footwork, okay? And me and Tony have talked about that too. We would like to see him not be hopping around, you know, in the pocket back there as much. But we would also like to see the offensive line form a pocket for him where if he's getting pressure from the outside, he can step up, okay? You know, a lot of times if you have the ends coming around and he has nowhere to go, then it ended up in him getting sacked. So, like I said, progression from all phases on offense. Um, hopefully the defense can get better in year two. You know, we lost some key players, but, hey, 
you know, everybody has to step in and step up. And um, Canales and Morgan, I do believe they they are doing the right thing. And I don't think they really had to. I think Panther Nation as a whole was just like, hold on, let's sit back. We got lost in this last year, me included. I had high expectations because we all thought drop in a quarterback, boom, we win the NFC South, we're going to the playoffs. That did not happen. So I do think their approach is sound. And it's like, hey, give us some time. Let's, let's start this thing. Let's go slowly and get it together. Again, what he said. <laughs> but you know, to 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 piggyback off of that, I think the two main things is progression and patience patience. You know, it's not gonna happen overnight. We, you know, like having the high expect expectations that we did as fans last year and turn around and be as disappointed as we were, I think that 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 did a lot of damage. That did a lot of damage uh to Panthers Nation. So, you know, we have to understand, you know, like like the old adage says, Rome wasn't built in a day. So, you know, yes, it was good that we kept Ejero Ivero in the whole defensive staff. Yeah, the whole kept staff. that continuity on the side of the ball. So, but we have to understand offensively where the biggest problems were last year starting with the offensive line, then it trickled to your quarterback who didn't uh, meet expectations. So, you know, you, you kind of overhauled the offensive line, which in my opinion, like I said before, it starts in the trenches, right? If the off if you get the offensive line, right, if the offensive line is doing what they need to do, then Bryce will be able to do what he needs to do. And then in turn, the wide receivers can do what, they need to do so it's like a trickle down effect you know you can't expect bryce young to go out here and evolve and progress and get better if the offensive line stays the same that's just not going to happen you know what i'm saying so he's going to go as far as the offensive line give him time to go and hope also hope that he makes the best and the right decisions doing the right reads, you know, go through his progressions, hope his footwork gets better. I hope they give him time to where he's not running for his life. You know, I, if, if if you were someone that got sacked 62 times last year and hit another 20 times, how good do you think your footwork going to be? How, how good is your footwork going to be when you're constantly running for your life? Every every two three snaps, you you got to get the hell up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all those things uh play go hand in hand. Like I said, better offensive line play. I'm going to assume that you're going to see better footwork from Bryce Young, Bryce Young, which will equate to better play all around the board. So progression and patience. Last three, and I'll get you guys out of here. Um. What is something we, I like asking this question because I, I, I find the answer is very fascinating. Um, what is something we aren't talking about enough? Is, is there something that, uh, and, and I can kind of combine that, you know, is there anything that you guys want to discuss here as well um, that maybe I haven't discussed or do you feel is being under talked about this off season as we go into another uh, season of Carolina Panthers football, something that you feel like isn't being talked about enough? Oh, I got a good one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Eddie P <laughs> and the thicker kicker. I do believe that we are going to have a new kicker in Carolina in 2024. I think that's something that's not talked about enough. Eddie kind of showed up, laughed it off, and even threw a slight jab at uh, at Harrison uh, Mevis and was like, oh, you, oh, they didn't draft him. He, he wasn't drafted. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, he's here, and he's making all of his field goals. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Eddie need to remember he wasn't drafted either. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that, there's that. Um for me, man, and listen, I and I'm going to keep talking about this and beating on this every time somebody asks me the center position. The center, the center, the center position. We talk about wanting to see um the progression of Bryce Young. We want to see Bryce Young get better. We want to see better numbers. We want to see better footwork. You know, all, all these things. Well, it's hard to do do that if the center of if the center of the interior offensive line is not right. And until 
um, you know, they get the pads on and we see some action in in, in the um oh my god, lost my train of thought. Um the two of that that to the joint practices. Sorry, the joint practices, the joint practices with the Jets, and you see the uh one on ones, you know, in, in practice and things like that. I want to see how how well Shot Tuttle and Derrick Brown and Ashawn Robinson can push Austin Corbin in practice. You know, I, I think that is key. You can have all the weapons you want on the outside, tight end position, and running back. But if the interior of the offensive line is not rock solid, and I do believe in the two guards, I do believe in Robert Hunt, and I do believe in Damian Lewis. So let me get that out there. Yeah. But you need to really solidify the rest of the offensive line with the center position. And right now, we have nobody on the center position in the two deep depth chart right now on paper that has ever played center in the National Football League. And you have some people feel like, oh, it's no big deal, but I beg to differ. All right, that's fair. Um, last two, any, um, do you have any bold predictions for the upcoming season? Uh, I've been asking this question to, in uh, the podcast. Um, any bold prediction for upcoming year? Uh, it can be a player. It can be about the team in general. It doesn't have to be wins and losses. It can be uh, anything you want it to be. J.C. Horn stays healthy, plays all 17 games, makes the Pro Bowl. Yeah, okay, so you went one slight deep. I had uh, former defensive end Al Wallace uh, on an earlier podcast this uh, spring, mm. and that was his exact – he left out the Pro Bowl part. He just said that okay. J.C. Gordon was going to stay healthy for all 17 games. Um, I don't think I don't think he said Pro Bowl, if I'm not mistaken, but he, he just said he'd be healthy for all 17 games. So. Nice. Okay. I think – Chuba Hubbard breaks a thousand yards this year. Okay. Um, yeah. but mine, mine, I, I talked about this with Joe Person a little bit. I think that between uh, Xavier Leggett and Jonathan Brooks, um, I think those are going to be our most. Um, so Joe kind of Joe's bold prediction was that one of those two guys would be in the running for offensive rookie of the year in the NFL, one of those two guys. Um, and so I kind of said, well, if I had to choose between those two, I would say Jonathan Brooks uh, of those two. Um, cause I wow. think, cause I think Brooks is dynamic. I, I, I was, I loved him at Texas. Uh, he is just as good as Bijan is. And I think he can be that guy for us that we saw, um, you know, with CMC uh, when he was here, uh, he he can uh, if he can be half of that, uh, I think we'll be in good hands on the running back. Row. All right, yes. bold prediction and high hopes. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, let's be honest. If if Jonathan Brooks can be half of CMC, we will be okay, uh, in on the running back position. Oh, yeah, yeah, but the the only thing to that. For him to be in the running for offensive rookie of the year, he would probably have to be starting day one. At least at least by week two. I'm 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 gonna give him a little leeway and say at least by week two. And I tried to, you know, the guy tore his ACL in November. Yeah. That's if true. he is the if he is the future RB one for the Carolina Panthers and you uh, drafted him as high as you did. There's no need to rush him. So my 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 prediction is, I don't think you'll see Joe Jonathan Brooks on the field until after the bye week. Okay, all right, that's fair. No, I I, I, totally I, agree. I agree with that method. Yeah, yeah. I agree yeah. with the approach. So sure. because with, with the other running backs that we have, so we still have Miles Sanders, we still have Chuba Hubbard. Then we go out and we sign Rashard Penny. We have uh Raheem Blackshear. So I think the running back room is stacked to the point to where you don't have to rush Jonathan Brooks back from his ACL injury. You want this guy back at at a hundred percent, uh, physically, and uh, um, you know. Physically and having the confidence that he needs to um to be the running back that that you hope for. 
Well, just want to um, throw it in there. No, that, that's good. Um, that was normally my last question for uh, pretty much all the podcasts I've been doing recently. But for you guys, I'm going to do one more because okay. your uh, your channel says uh, two fans in the stands. So as if you were two fans literally in the stands, my f- last fun question is going to be, um, you can't name anybody currently on the Panthers. Uh, you can, they can still be in the league or they can be long retired. Who was your favorite Panther, you know, to watch, um, in, in your life? Who's been that guy? If you had to just name the one Panther that you enjoyed watching all the time from the stands, you know, who, who, who was that for you? Big 89, Steve Smith. He was my favorite. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was a good one. I'm a- Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go on the defensive side and I'm gonna say Julius Peppers. Both of those guys were outstanding. Um and, and I and just to be different, because and I because I could have said either of the either of those. Uh I was a big Keekly fan. I was so ha- uh, uh not yeah. happy when he retired um early from the concussions. It, it that yeah. was just painful. Uh reminded right. me of, of Dan Morgan's career, uh, to be quite honest. Um pretty much. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I just wanted to end on something different um, from a, from your uh, just, just, I love going down memory lane. Sometimes it, it's happy oh, yeah. to, for our souls. And just when the Panthers, uh, hopefully we can start seeing some uh, positive upward trends. Cause as we know, it can't get much worse than it did last year. So um, well, CJ Tony from two fans of the stands uh, have been my guest today here on inside the vault uh, guys. Great to be with you. Thanks for coming on uh, the show. Um, is there anything you guys want to plug before I let you go? Uh, obviously, you got the channel, the podcast, Two Fans of the Stands. Uh, follow them on Twitter at Two Fans ITS. Um, anything else you guys want to plug before I let you go? Um, no, that's it. You can find us on all social media other than Twitter at Two Fans in the Stands. And hey, Ryan, we appreciate the opportunity and the chance to come and chop it up with you. Yeah. Same same exact thing, Ryan. We, we, great, we greatly appreciate you having us on, man. All right. Well, uh, we'll talk to you guys down the road and thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. And that'll wrap up episode number 42 of Inside the Vault, a Carolina Panthers podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Smith. Rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you next time.